Steve, an amazing outpouring of love from supporters following your move to Nottingham Forest. What, what did you make of all of that? Yeah, uh, so nice actually. Um, obviously, they get to read um, obviously every every one of them, but a lot of them had a lot of messages, and yeah, it was lovely, lovely to to read and um, how much obviously I kind of meant to to the fans as well was was really nice and. Um, it was an emotional, emotional read, but it also made me feel very proud um, because there's been a lot of obviously highs over the time that I've been here and to be part of it and, and to kind of um, affect obviously people that support the club is, is really nice. I was going to say, you've, you've already used that word emotion. You must have gone through all the emotions in the lead up to the move and pondering what you were going to do. Yeah, definitely. Um, this, this wasn't... Um, a straightforward kind of decision. Uh, I still had six months on my on my contract, so um, and a team that's kind of pushing to to, to win the league. You know, it was a it was a really difficult decision. Uh, all my emotions obviously come to to a head, and uh, I kind of had to make the right one. And obviously, the right one was to was to was to leave and and, and pursue something else because um, I really want to play. I really want to contribute on the pitch. Uh, and I was given the chance to do that. So a very difficult decision because my love for the club and obviously the town, but um, sometimes you have to kind of weigh everything up and, and, and I do feel it's the right time for me to leave. People sometimes forget that professional footballers are also human beings and fathers and husbands and things like that. What of your boys, Eden and Frey, what did they make of the move? Um, well, they're diehard Bournemouth fans, so they weren't, <laughs> they weren't delighted, so uh, they're still running around in their kits and um, they're beating up in the forest in, in my front room. Uh, so, um, now nah, they were born here, they'll, they'll stay here. Um, they're Bournemouth fans and uh, they love the club as well. So, yeah, they're, they're excited for the move. They're, um, they're ex I think they're, they're obviously, especially Frey, he's a bit older, so he kind of understands a little bit more. Um, he's excited to, to watch me playing again. and. Uh, to do something different as well. Ten years, it's not often we see a player stay at one club for that for that long. I guess it's a two-way street. You're fortunate to have been here for ten years and the club is fortunate to have had you all through your 20s. Yeah, um, a third of my life, obviously, at, at the club. Um, a huge period in the club's history as well. Um, it's gone hand in hand, obviously. Uh, like you say, it's a, it's a two-way thing and um, the club have been extremely good to me and, uh, and, and I hope my, my commitment to the club is, uh, is matched on, on, on that behalf. And um, Yeah, the, my career was, was, was shaped by, um, by this club, the, the growth and where they've come from uh, in, in this short amount of time really in the club's history, 10 years is it, nothing but the amount that the club has grown and players that have come in and gone, the managers that have come and gone. Um, it's been incredible. The journey is, uh, I don't think that will happen in uh, a long, long time for, for the club and, uh, and individuals that have played for the club now. So yeah, uh, immensely proud of, of, of how everything's gone. Couldn't have asked for any more. It was uh, an unbelievable journey. And, um, yeah, I've said this before, but I don't think I'll ever appreciate it until I kind of stop playing. You, you, over the last couple of days, I've been thinking of what we've done and how much the club's changed. But until I take myself out of football and actually sit back, watch the games and look at the, the results we had uh, in the Premier League. And you think Bournemouth, you know, were struggling in, in League Two, then they were beating Chelsea 4-0 uh, here. So it's, uh, it's very surreal. Testimonials are also very rare in football these days. It's not often you see a player granted a, a testimonial, but you, you have been, been granted one. Just give us your thoughts on that. Yeah, um, really excited about it. Um, really looking forward to, to bringing back some of the, the players that had so much success here and, and, and didn't get to, to give the club and, and fans a farewell as well. So um, obviously those talks will, will take place and I'm going to have to try and persuade people to... Uh, to get their boots back on and, and you know put on a bit of an exhibition for for the fans. So yeah, it's um, again. Uh, I know I keep saying this word, but so proud that 
I've been able to achieve, obviously, that. Um, a great opportunity to, to say goodbye to the fans properly. And really nice um, opportunity again to bring, bring some of the players back that, that didn't get to say goodbye, um, that have obviously the utmost respect of, of, from the club and myself as well. So hopefully that all comes together nicely and, and it can be a really nice day. Steve, you signed here on a month's loan, a month's emergency loan, I think it was. You were probably going to stay for four weeks and then go back to Brighton, ended up staying for 10 years. I bet you never imagined that would have happened at the time, did you? No, definitely not. Um, and I instantly loved it as soon as I came down. Um, there was, you know, the club at the time and the manager at the time trusted me to come into the team and, and help out. Um, and that month obviously quickly was extended through myself wanting to be here and kind of embrace first team football. Um, and it's nice to see, yeah, we, we spoke about the growth of the club, but the, the, the change in the town as well, I think that that's gone hand in hand with the club's kind of rise. Um, the, the town has, has really changed over the, the 10 years. Um, it's a place that um, I really enjoyed living, um, growing up in. Um, so yeah, it was a huge, huge part of myself wanting to, to stay at the club as well, was, was the area itself as well. In the lower reaches of League One at that time when you came in, and I would imagine that playing in the Championship, certainly playing in the Premier League, were, must have seemed miles away. Just, just try to put into words how things have changed in those 10 years at the club and the club you first came into. Yeah, it's changed an awful lot. Obviously, four stands now. Um, obviously, three when I first, first came. The, the owner uh, that took over from obviously Eddie Mitchell and Maxim is... Uh, been outstanding for the club, uh, the money he must have spent and his backing, the patience, the trust. Um, obviously, he, he likes to keep a low profile, but I don't think his, what he's given to the club um, has been truly spoken about. Uh, so I want a, a massive thanks to, to him and his family because he's obviously trust, trusted myself um, as well by keeping me here uh, as long as he has. Um, so yeah, he, he, he deserves a massive, um, massive lot of credit. Um, obviously the people behind the scenes, the, the managers that have all been here have changed along the way. Uh, we used to train at Camford School, and now they've got a nice setup with the pavilion and training pitches. So, but the, the, the nice thing I would say that, that hasn't changed is the people, you know, in the background that, that have stayed throughout, um, kept the club ticking, kept it, the, the family club that, that they want to be. I know it's very difficult to sometimes keep that connection with, with the fans and, and the people around because the club kind of moves into the Premier League. It becomes, you know, like a, a, a global business. Um, but I think the club have been very conscious of that and, and tried as, as much as possible to keep that connection. And I think that's credit to, to the people that run it as well. Promoted from League One in 2013, and then you were ever present during the club's championship winning campaign of 2014-15, you must have been pinching yourself. Yeah, um, to play every single game in a, in a title winning team is, is special. To contribute on the pitch um, at a young age as well. To learn off obviously the, the players that were in around me, there was a fantastic group. Um, not just the 11, the squad was, was amazing, we had some, some unbelievable talent in the, in the group and uh, some great characters as well, headed obviously by uh, a top manager and, and, and staff. Um, a team that I'll, that, that season we, we got promoted was my, my favourite every team, um, the, my favourite season at the club. Uh, I don't think it'll ever be topped. Um, yeah, it was an absolute privilege to, to be involved in that team and, and, and that winning year. Now, there's obviously been lots and lots of highs. Can you just pick out a selection of highs of your 10 years? Signing. Um, obviously, Simon, signing permanently, uh, committing to, to a club that I, I really wanted to be at was, was definitely um, a huge high. Uh, the, the promotion day at Charlton was incredible. Uh, beating Chelsea for the first time, the first big result that we had after struggling a little bit in the Premier League. B 
bit of Man United, you know. Chelsea here for you know, the highs. Uh, uh, a lot of highs. It's it's really difficult to to choose one, um, or or even a couple because you know ten years of football with the amount of success that we've had is it, very difficult. But I, I would say that the whole time I've been here has been a high. I, I've loved every minute of it, even the lows. Sometimes you have to pinch yourself and realise where where you where the low was. We was at a low time in the Premier League, but. So you couldn't have, I could never have expected that in League One. So the whole journey uh, for me is a is a high, and uh, I wouldn't change anything. Some memorable goals in there as well. Just pick out a couple of those, maybe. My first goal for the club, uh, obviously Carlisle getting promoted as well that day. Um, a big towering header. I had dinner with Tommy off it last night, and he reckoned I nicked it off him. But um, some would say I just wanted it a little bit more. Um, Newcastle away. A special moment to score in, in such an iconic stadium and, and, and win the game. <sighs> Fulham away. Uh, some say it was a cross, but it never was. Um, to see the way of the strike, you know, um, was a special one. So yeah, the, I, at that time I had a bit of a knack of scoring goals. Um, the Swansea goal I scored the header. That was one of my favourite headers. Um, and we, we won the game off that, but Southampton at home as well, scoring in a, against a, the club's rivals was, was special and uh, I think being involved in that win was huge. So you may have answered these next two questions then, Steve, because I'm going to ask you one moment that you would want to relive from your 10 years at Bournemouth, just one. The last five minutes of um, Charlton, when we realised we'd won the league, obviously getting promoted was, was incredible, but winning the league, the, the cheer of the fans, when we realised that <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday had scored that goal, the emotions, me and, me and Tommy looked at each other and was like, we, we won the league, it was special and a moment that I would love to go back to and, and relive the, the feelings that I felt that, that afternoon, yeah. What's your ideal scenario, Steve, to how the rest of 2021-22 pans out? Um, the ideal situation is, is see Bournemouth obviously get promoted and then not in a forest go, go up uh, and follow them through, through a, however, um, playoffs or, or whatnot. And we both get to, to play against each other in the Premier League would, would be uh, an amazing kind of end to my Bournemouth career and the start of my new one. And the 19th of February, Nottingham Forest against Bournemouth. You'll just give us your thoughts on, on that one. What's, what's that going to be like for you? Um, I really don't know. Uh, it's going to be very emotional, very um, a, a extremely difficult game to, to play in football-wise, but equally... Um, I never kind of saw myself playing against Bournemouth ever, so yeah, maybe we should do a, an interview after it and I'll tell you kind of my emotions then. So yeah, it's going to be really difficult. I think really difficult one for my family to, to watch on. Difficult to play in because I obviously love the club and want them to succeed. Um, but playing against them for a new team, uh, be looking to, to push for promotion as well. Um, be looking to, to come back and perform well and, and win the game here. A very popular player on and off the pitch, an ambassador for the club as well. Steve, I know that you would love to go through all those messages and reply individually. You can't probably because it would take forever. So here's an opportunity. Let's have a message for the Bournemouth supporters. Yeah, a huge thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, obviously being able to, to represent the club, to captain the club all through... Uh, the rise, obviously, games and to be accepted into, obviously, a special club, a family club, and, and to spend, obviously, a great amount of time here. Um, yeah, uh, I feel that they've, the connection that kind of was made eventually 
um, was extremely strong. Um, helped me through obviously some difficult times in in my Bournemouth career and and really made me a, a better person, a better player. And <coughs> their, their loyalty to the club is is second to none. Especially the amount of obviously problems that the, the club has faced and. Um, you, you always saw the same faces around, you know, you get to know who who really loves the club and uh, who will do anything for, for the players and, and the staff and whoever's representing the team at this time. So um, they're a real credit to, to the players that are playing. Um, obviously the fans drive football clubs and um, this one is a, is a very special place. So I just want to say thank you for the last 10 years. And thank you for everything from the last 10 years, Steve. Thank you.